Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior, and welcome to another Soul Calibur video. Now, with the release of Soul Calibur 6, I figured that I'd still keep covering the series, as well as talk about the lesser known characters that actually do make a cameo in this game. Now, of course, from what you can tell of the cameos, that means that they aren't playable in this game. However, that's not to say that they haven't been playable in the other installments. So, from what you can tell from the title, today I'll be talking about Amy, her relationship with Raphael, and her connection to Viola, as it seems to be a monocle and persona she takes up in Soul Calibur 5. But what are the links that we can draw between the two? But it was most definitely Amy that became Viola. Well, let's start off at the very beginning. Now, Amy's first appearance was in the second Soul Calibur game, and she did have a rather tough upbringing. As you see, she was born in France at a time where the Black Death was at its worst, and unfortunately, her parents fell victim to this. With no other family left, she was left homeless in the streets, and if she didn't die from the plague that was going around, she would most certainly succumb to her hunger. Now, by either fate or chance, Amy was one day approached by a young Frenchman known as Raphael Sorel, an individual who came from a very rich lineage, but was on the run from the law. As you see, he was forced to kill someone in self-defense, as they had been affected by the evil seed. Now, this individual was in a very high position in France, so many people were looking for him. So when he came across Amy, she'd be kind enough to shelter him and point any soldiers in the wrong direction in order to help him. Now, in Raphael's eyes, he was now in debt to her. So as a form of gratitude, he would take Amy into his home and raise her as his daughter, as this was a form of kindness he'd never seen in a person before. Now during the events of the second Soul Calibur game, Raphael sets out in hopes of tracking down Soul Edge. Whilst this is going on, Amy is forced to remain in the castle, but eventually her paranoia gets the best of her, so she does attempt to seek him out. And when she's able to track down Raphael, she finds him terribly injured, as during the events of Soul Calibur 2, Raphael went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nightmare and was ultimately defeated by the Azure Knight. Now in saying that, it's not like Raphael didn't get some very good hits in, but ultimately he did fail in his conquest against Soul Edge. And when Amy brought him back home and attempted to nurse his wounds, he noticed that the deep cuts were giving off some kind of infectious energy, something that she unfortunately came into contact with. This infection would not only corrupt Raphael, but also Amy by just simply touching it. The young girl began to feel ill, and from looking into this, Amy learned that Raphael and herself had been corrupted by the dark energy within Soul Edge. They had become manifestations of the dark energy that Soul Edge gave off. Now, unlike the typical malfested you see in the series, Amy and Raphael took on traits similar to that of vampirism. In order to sustain life and keep going, they were forced to drain the life and energy of innocence, resulting in them having a longer lifespan. Now, understandably, Amy was terrified of what she'd become, so she cut herself off from the world and decided to remain within the castle. Now, because of her actions, Raphael's mind began to twist and turn. The corruption of Soul Edge was starting to burrow its way into his mind, and he ultimately came to the conclusion that if the world could not accept him and Amy for who they were, then he'd forcibly change it by obtaining Soul Edge himself. So by the end of the third Soul Calibur game, Raphael would travel out to Ostrinsberg with the hopes of finally obtaining the sword. But during the ensuing conflict, Raphael did die, which sadly in turn orphaned Amy once more. But here are where things get different and rather interesting. During the climax of Soul Calibur 4, Nightmare and Soul Edge are vanquished by Siegfried and Soul Calibur, destroying the evil spirit sword and vanquishing it from the world. Now this is where we see the somewhat end of Amy in a certain fashion. As you see, when we look at the Viola character, we can draw a lot of similarities to Amy. And what further solidifies that Viola is more or less Amy at this point is the fact that the character has an amnesia story arc. In terms of dress style and even visually from their face, they do look very similar, and the icing on the cake is that Viola actually takes on a few moves from Amy. So if we can draw those comparisons, it's rather safe to say that Amy between Soul Calibur 4 and 5 ended up losing her memory and becoming the Viola character. Now in saying that, let me expand that idea and let you know of Viola's story. According to her bio, Viola randomly wakes up in a ravaged and barren town. Her memory is completely erased and the only thing that seems to be a key to her past is a mysterious awe, as it was the only thing that was the key to her past, she would hold it tight to her chest. From this point onwards, Viola would travel from town to town trying to find answers about her own past. But unfortunately, by doing so, she caught a lot of negative attention. For a significant amount of time, Viola would pursue fortune telling as a career. Now, she didn't just do this for financial needs, but she'd hoped that by staring into the crystal ball long enough, then maybe she'd be able to find out some secrets of her past. But sadly, all her attempts would falter. Now, one day, she'd be approached by another new 
newcomer to the series, Vi, and was able to empathize with the girl. Realizing that she felt out of place with the rest of society, he believed that they were both kindred spirits, and that maybe together they'd be able to find out the secret of her past. So the two would leave town, and eventually be recruited into Siegfried's group, the Schwartz Winds. Now from this point onwards, we don't really see much more from Viola, as she is a side character in the main story, only appearing here and there, and not really doing anything to affect the main story. But with the amount of detail and foreshadowing that we do have here, we can draw a lot of lines of similarities between Amy and Viola. What interests me is how they managed to remove the whole Malfestation story arc from her, as this was a key part in Raphael's story. Maybe by Soul Edge being destroyed, Viola was freed of her corruption, but most likely at the expense of her memories and who she was as a person. But yeah, that's kind of it for this video, guys. I'm well aware that Amy is a very popular character, and Viola was one of the new Soul Calibur 5 characters that people actually liked. Now, the soft reboot that happened with Soul Calibur 6, what do you think are the chances of us ever really seeing Viola return? As for the most part, we still do have Amy in game, but it is basically cameos at this point. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Now, if possible, guys, let's try getting this video to about 500 likes. It's a great way of helping this channel out since YouTube's ad system is broken as hell. Also, please please don't forget to ring that bell as YouTube is having a lot of problems with my videos not appearing in your sub boxes. So it helps me out if you guys ring the bell and let you know when I actually upload a video. But yeah, that's it for this one guys. Now as always, please comment, like, subscribe and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care and I'll see you all next time.